Shannon because she's been taking a lot of heat. She's the one that pretty much put this together and the reason why I'm standing here and others are up here. We have with us now the fabulous Mora, Mora Fields. She was voted apparently least likely to be a comedian in high school. So let's give it up to make her feel a little bit comfortable. Mora. Good evening. I'm Maura Fields, and here I am again for the third annual Forest Web Comedy Night. And uh, you know, it's true I'm not really a comedic kind of person. <laughs> no, I'm not. And it, I became. I was a very serious kid, and I became an existentialist when I was six. And since that time, you know, I had to do a lot of recovery from existentialism. Um, <laughs> and that wasn't easy. <laughs> I mean, you know, detox, 12-step um, programs, meds. It was a lot of work. But now, now I'm a non-existentialist which means that I don't believe in my own existence. Or yours either. And it's a good thing because if I did, I would never come up here and run the risk of looking like a total dweeb. I keep saying I'm never gonna do this comedy thing again. And um, the reason is because you know, the stuff I talk about up here isn't exactly funny. I mean, I just get up here and talk about my thoughts about things and my ideas. And, you know, for some reason, people laugh. And I make other loud noises. A few hand gestures. Gestures. <clears throat> and the truth is, these tree hugger people, Forest Web, they gave me a choice between helping them out at this fundraiser event and chaining myself to one of those feller buncher logging machines out in some protest area in the coast range. I mean, it could be days or weeks until someone even came to arrest me. And, you know, there are bears, at least until they finish clear cutting their entire habitat. So here I am. And uh, mainly what I talk about is my spiritual philosophy which has as a basic premise that there <clears throat> wait a minute <laughs> that you as a personal entity do not exist and neither do I we are all one shared consciousness and there is no such thing as an individual self and now in the past I have provided some very clear logical arguments for this so you won't think I'm part of some crazy cult running around naked out there smoking catnip and waiting for the mothership. And I'm not talking about Aprovecho. I'm pretty sure they don't smoke catnip. And last year I even gave some mathematical proofs. But uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Mathematical proofs that the self does not exist. I thought I presented it pretty well, but apparently some of you were not convinced. I did think that um, Hal Hartzell and Donnie Sevilla were on board with this idea that there are no selves. But uh, I found out later they thought I said there are no elves, <laughs> which I happen to think do exist, and in fairly large numbers. So in spite of my logic, many of you persist in this belief that you actually exist. <laughs> and you're getting more and more convinced that I'm the wacko here. As they say, WTF. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about something different tonight. I'm going to talk about the illusion of time. And the reason I say illusion is because, well, time doesn't exist either. 
Albert Einstein, who also believed that time was an illusion, had this to say, this description of time. He said, time is what keeps everything from happening all at once. <laughs> or maybe that was Woody Allen, I'm not sure. And here's a quote from Meister Eckert, the 12th century Christian mystic. He said, time is what keeps the light from reaching us. There is no greater obstacle to reality than time. And he was an enlightened guy, you know? And that's what he said. So in our actual experience, can we find any evidence that there's any time other than now, this present moment? I mean, you might have a thought about some past time or some future time, but that's exactly what it is, a thought. And the thought's happening right now. <clears throat> and just because you have a thought about something doesn't make it real, right? I mean, thoughts come from the imagination, which by definition is not reality. And we've come up with our arbitrary measurements, like hours and minutes, that supposedly measure time. But what is this substance that they supposedly measure? I mean, we can't really describe time apart from the measurements. And can we really break time down into some basic unit that it's made up of? What would that unit be? The second? The nanosecond? Of course, it could be the jiffy, as in, I'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> but what is a jiffy? Well, it turns out a jiffy in computer engineering is one cycle of a computer's system clock. And there are 6,000 jiffies in one minute. This is true. And so it's very small. But I only just recently found this out, and I can't wait to start using it. Like, uh, hey, i got to put you on hold for about 4,000 jiffies. Be right back. You can't actually get much done in one jiffy. And it's only because time doesn't exist that we can come up with something as completely insane as daylight savings time. I mean, when daylight savings starts, we're supposed to believe that the second it turns 2 a.m., it's suddenly 3 a.m. A whole hour just, what, vaporizes? And then you have to lose another hour just trying to reset the clock in your car. And it, where am I? And what do they do with all that daylight they save anyhow? You know, 350 million people in this country, that's 350 million person hours of daylight we save. We should be using that, like they do in Norway where they have daylight all night long. And, you know, I suspect that we've been secretly exporting our daylight to Norway and possibly to Afghanistan, where we use it for military operations. I have a petition here, which I hope you'll all sign tonight, demanding government accountability. It's called Americans for Daylight Transparency. And uh, our county commissioner, Faye Stewart, is supporting this. Yeah. When he's not busy trying to figure out how to clear cut the rest of our public forests for corporate profit. <clears throat> and it's not just an hour here and there that they've deleted. I mean, people don't realize, but over the course of history, we've actually vaporized whole blocks of time. In the year 1582, Pope Gregory XIII deleted 10 whole days from the calendar. Just like that, about 500 jiffies. And he, Pope Gregory accomplished this by issuing a papal bull, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. And you know, what happened if your credit card, do, credit card bills were due in that period? I mean, I'm guessing they charged you a big late fee and raised your interest rate to 26%. And all this is why I can say that the whole concept of time is ridiculous. We can't define it, we can't get to its essence, and we change it whenever we want to suit our own purposes. And then there's football time, which is in some other dimension entirely. And people 
know intuitively that time has no value. You've heard the expression, I wouldn't even give him the time of day. Well, that shows pretty conclusively, I think, that time is absolutely worthless. I mean, whoever invented that saying couldn't think of anything less valuable than time to use in it. And you know, these same people that won't give you the time of day, they won't give you a rat's ass either, no matter what. I'm not sure exactly which one is more worthless. And personally, personally, I think a rat's ass does have value. I mean, I believe that every animal and every human has great value just by virtue of existing here on this planet. I mean, a rat's ass is a sacred thing and we should honor it. And you know, rats have been giving their lives for the benefit of humanity every day in horrendous laboratory experiments all over the world. I mean, I don't know if they're lining up to do it, but they're definitely getting conscripted and we owe them. We owe them some gratitude and some dignity. So instead of not giving a rat's ass, we should be giving a rat's ass whenever we can. I try to always remember to have one with me to give. And I want you to know out there that, you know, as possibly delusional as I may appear, I actually do give a rat's ass about all of you. Well, well, most of you, actually. A few of you, anyhow. Um, you know, Alan Boss, I give a rat's ass about you. Thorn Gabriel, I give a rat's ass about you. doesn't catch on fire. <laughs> um, and I have a little advice for all of you. Um, I have a little advice for all of you. <laughs> you know when you just really admire someone but you don't know how to express it? Or maybe, maybe you're attracted to them but you, you're shy. I mean, just walk right up to them. You don't have to say a word and give them one of these. And you know, another thing people just will not give is a flying fuck. <laughs> Don't get alarmed, I didn't bring any of those along. But you know, people, what is wrong with a flying fuck? I mean, personally, I would probably give a rat's ass before I would give a flying fuck. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I think they're great, but it's just that when you get to a certain age, you're just not that athletic anymore. All those trapezes and things. And besides, how many times do you have to join the Mile High Club? You know, people don't realize, but if you just get the lifetime membership when you sign up, you don't have to keep paying those yearly dues. Well, even though time doesn't exist, Mine's about up now, and, um, or at least it will be in a few hundred jiffies. So I just want to say, you know, you don't have to worry about wasting time, losing time, giving time, killing time, overtime, Greenwich Mean Time, timing out, two timing. None of it means anything. There's only one of those, one thing that you might want to think about a little bit, and that's uh, what is that? <laughs> There's one thing you, you might want to think about, and that's doing time. <clears throat> but then that would give you plenty of time to ponder the non-existence of time. And as Malcolm Forbes, Forbes said, there's never time enough unless you're serving it. Well, thank you for listening. You've been very tolerant and uh, give a rat's ass now and then. Don't forget to donate to Forrest Webb.
was comedy. Yes. <laughs>